Welcome everyone to the third and most in-depth tutorial on Lumion's new photo matching feature. If you recall, back in the second photo matching tutorial, we learned how to create a good photo match render, and we also got into polishing it with some additional editing in Photoshop. In this tutorial, we'll use a more complex photo for our photo matching, which has objects in the foreground and background that will be impossible to avoid. We will learn how to use Lumion's effects and Photoshop to sort these foreground elements out. If you don't have Photoshop, any other image editor with similar functionality will do. Let's first start with the basic photo match. Let's start with a new project on the empty green field. Let's load up the Van Manen Villa model, which we used in our first two tutorials. Remember, if you don't see that villa in the Import Models menu, you will need to load the Van Manen example scene once so that the villa itself can be made available to use from our Import Model list in any new Lumion project, such as our empty green field. Let's go into Photo Mode and store a new camera position. Load the photo matching effect. Click on Example and load an example which looks similar to the photo we'll use and similar to the shape of the villa. Now, let's load the photo we'll be using. If you'd like to follow along with the same photo I am using, please download it from the link in the video description. Place the red and blue axis lines as we learned in our first tutorial. This time, the sides of the house in this photo are harder to see. I'll try to use the house's roof and base for my z-axis. Now, we'll place the anchor point using our cube. What we can see now is that there are a lot of trees and other objects in the photo that are being obstructed by our villa. In any photo matching which combines a 3D object with a flat 2D picture, you'll always have the 3D object appear on top of anything else in the photo. Ideally, we should use pictures of the real-life location which our design will occupy once it's built that does not have elements in the foreground but obviously that's not always possible. Later on, we will learn how to bring back these foreground items using Photoshop, along with the photo mask image that's created alongside any photo match render. But first, let's tweak and add some more Lumion effects to make the image blend together better. As we did in the second tutorial, let's first load the overcast style again. The house looks a bit too dark compared to the photo. So let's make it lighter again with the color correction effect. Set the limit high slider, this time at 0.6. Set the temperature and tint slightly lower. Now the lighting looks pretty good. Let's render this and then we'll use all the outputs to do some more edits in Photoshop. Now let's correct all the foreground elements that our villa is covering using a photo editor, in our case Photoshop. Let's open up the location on our hard drive where we saved out the render. We'll drag the three output images from Lumion into Photoshop, so they become three layers of one image. Also, drag in the original photo, then we'll unlock the background layer. Let's get organized and rename the layers to what they represent. As you can see, the original photo is slightly more crisp than the rendered photo match. To get the best possible result, we'd like to work with the original image and add the Lumion image without the photo on top. Select the photo mask image and copy it. Select the Lumion render and click on the Add Layer Mask button at the bottom. Click on the Channels tab and click on the bottom layer so it gets selected and visible. Paste the alpha mask image into this layer. Click on the Layers tab again. Hide all layers except the Lumion render layer. As you can now see, it shows the Lumion objects without any background. Show the original photo layer as well. Now you can easily show and hide the Lumion objects on top of the original photo. The beauty of the alpha channel is that you can paint on it with black, and the painted area will disappear from the combined image. Painting with white will make parts of the original image visible through the Lumion objects. To do that, you need to select the alpha mask part of the layer. Let's cut out part of a tree which needs to appear in front of the house. Have a close look at how high and low we need to cut it. Then, hide the Lumion render layer. 
Select the polygonal lasso tool and select part of the tree that needs to appear in front of the villa. Select the paint bucket tool. Show the Lumion render layer again. With the alpha channel selected in the layers section, click with the bucket inside of the selected tree area. Now the tree appears in front of the house because we made that section black in the alpha channel, meaning transparent. Do the same for the other trees. Similarly, we can paint on the alpha channel with a black color the areas that need to appear in front of the house. The benefit of the paint tool is that you can set its size and softness to what's needed for the part you're editing. We can paint across the photo and see the original image appear where we painted. With the clone stamp tool, we can paint over some other parts that we don't want to show up in our photo match. Press the Alt key in an area that you want to copy and then paint over the area that needs to be deleted from the photo. There's also another way to do this. We can make a rough selection of the part that needs to be removed. Then go to Edit, Fill. In the window that opens, select in Contents, Content Aware, and then click OK. How good the results are through this alternative method depends on the photo. To have more control over which part is taken into account by Photoshop to perform this background filling, you can also use Content Aware Fill. Now, at the right you see a preview of the end result, and you can paint out parts of the area that should not be used for the filling process. Here's the end result. It looks pretty good. In this case, we didn't use the photo match generated by Lumion, but we used the rendered image, the photo mask, and the original photo instead. Thank you so much for following along with our photo matching tutorials. I hope you learned a ton, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.